Hey guys, it's Vaya here. It's time for me to explain what I did for 2HTS number 142. The theme was the internet and Kirsten asked me to explain some of the synths and, and tricks and stuff I used. And also I'm going to edit it a bit because there are some some elements which I didn't quite like as much as I hoped. So let's get started. What I did right in the beginning was trying to get a chord progression and I, I'm using the trusty chip 32 synthesizer for that and I was drawing my own waveform here. It's half of it is a square wave I, uh, because I love the digital type of sound it makes as well as uh, some more or less randomly shaped uh, things to make that noise. I also compressed it later with the auxiliary input, but it's not. It's for the sidechain, which I have in this line. It only comes in way later. So let's not care about it too much and let's look at the main progression, which goes throughout the track almost the entire time. So here I have, some, I have an octave of E, E and G, sounds like that. And I like to alternate a bit. So it, it, it's not too boring, so I'm, I'm playing some other notes in between. And I really like this uh, formanty type of sound of the synthesizer. So the second thing I did was uh, I'm using a serum patch here with this Scout wavetable. And uh, that's why I called it the, the patch portal scout because it has a portamento feature which I'm not using all the time only at one note or another. It's just more or less an arpeggio. So nothing too interesting on its own, but I think together with the chords it it's uh, it works really nice. And also I'm I've been using some automation lines here. One of them being the filter, so I'm, I'm starting, uh, it's barely audible at the start and gets faded in. And right here where the first bass sound kicks in, uh, I'm reducing it significantly, so almost the entire frequencies are coming through. Also here's some sort of automation which scans through the wavetables, wave so it gets a bit of a morphing type of sound. I just like to have some movement uh, throughout the entire thing, so it's not too boring because there's a lot of loops going on. But let's just listen to the start for now. And here you can hear the Porter Scout synth coming, getting louder. Yeah, and this sound here, I made this way, way back in a free wavetable. Ah, no, no wavetable. Yeah, well, it has wavetables, but I just really like this. Subt uh, I use it as my favorite subtractive synthesizer. And yeah, I try to make some sort of atmospheric sound here. <coughs> so it, a filter sweep with a bit of resonance and it starts loud and then falls off with the um, volume. And the second thing is, uh, yeah, a bit more automated. Again, I, I like to have some sort of movement in my, uh, in my sounds so they don't get too boring when they're extended over a longer time. And here's the first thing I, I want to fix because I don't really like, uh, I mean, from the regular loops I used here, I tried to do something different for this part, but it just doesn't sound too well, so I'll try to fix it in a second. Yeah, it's probably not too bad, but I really think that this one should rather be an octave, probably, because the, the bass note itself is also an E. So if I'm playing an E here, uh, this is a minor second, a uh, major second, which I don't think fits too well. So this should sound better already. Uh, 
Yeah, of course, there are seconds too. But I think it, it, it sounds really nice. Uh, I'm not sure if you can call this a suspended chord, but I think that's more or less the effect it has when you're playing some note which could be could have been part of another chord, but uh, no, it's not a suspended chord, definitely not, but yeah, that's just, I, I prefer I prefer this one to the previous version. And the same thing uh, happens here, it's the same, uh, the same chord here, so I'll, let me change that. And finally, in the final part, I actually fixed this, fixed this during the, uh, during 2HTS, I just cut off the bass note here so that there's no more E at this point. So yeah, it doesn't sound too bad after all, so I might just keep it that way. Okay, let's see what else do we have. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was the best choice to use a vibraphone here, but I just really like the patch because uh, it it's one of those who who pan according to the position uh, to the note pitch. So the deeper notes will be more to the left, I think, and other way around. And I played a little melody with it. And I decided to start the drums about halfway through. So yeah, let's see what it did there. Okay, um, those of you who know my track um, Magma Riders, or Magma Raiders as it was uh, relabeled later during development, I used exactly the same build up here, with the exception that the riser and the, the noise sweep are actually, um, yeah, I, I cut it up and, and repeated it a bit for that sort of effect. Which, but I didn't, I mean, I cut almost the entire uh, synth I used with the one exception, or a few exceptions. The drum beat goes, um, the drum beat goes on, uh, uses a different rhythm at the end. And also I'm fading in some strings here. And one of the more heavier basses I used for this uh, compo. And one thing I don't like about this is the, the, cr the, Bit crushed symbol. I mean, the sound as on its own, maybe not too bad, but it's just it's destroying the sound at some points, especially at the uh, the build after the build up. It's just overloading the limiter and everything I used. So I think I, I should probably use make it a bit more quiet. So I'm, I'm reducing the volume here, and also I plan to re uh, remove each second symbol, which I also did in the later parts, so I'll do that right away. Okay, so another thing I used here is a, is a trick. I think it was Nukech who gave me the tip to use a synthesizer to create noise for the sidechain, so I I'm not actually using the drum beat at all to as a sidechain. I just wanted this pumping type of uh, sound. I'll just show it to you with the strings here. To get a bit of a movement and also to leave some headroom for the other synthesizers which are coming in here. So I'll go and play that part for now. Okay, and this might be a part which 
a few of you might like or I don't know it might be one of my signatures things I like to do it's just an, a really fast arpeggio here uh, which gets slower over time to lead into the next part um, yeah it's just a really fast arpeggio I think it's even a triad yeah so it's a down arp just playing in the triad here and this is the same the same chord or it's the same arp just one octave higher and it's over but it sounds really neat i think yeah what else um i also like uh, my uh, personally i really like the complex type of thing but i didn't follow complex rules here at all i just inserted random synths at more or less random intervals to get a bit of to spice up the sound a bit so that it's not too static so i added in a few bleeps here and there and yeah the dark blue thing here is this, the sub bass which i also i don't really like to put the sub bass in throughout the entire the entire uh, chorus so to say or drop or whatever you want to call it i like to bring it in a bit later for a bit of even more the type of thing so it's like it's awesome before but it's even cooler then and i think with the arpeggio leading into that part it's really effective Okay, this part here is more or less a fug, I think it, that's what you call it. <laughs> it's playing more or less the same uh, melody or sounds with a, which the Ness played before, especially this part here. That type of thing. Okay, and after that, all the the. the the instruments which consume a lot of the spectrum are removed and it's more or less going back to the start so um, the the main part with the highest intensity is over so the sub bass cuts off and um, the only thing that leads back into the the previous soundscape which i had like here about here so it's quite similar this, it's actually the, the same uh, notes from the vibraphone here. However, there's a bit of drum uh, action going on. Nothing too interesting, just the hi-hats and the crushed cymbal, the bit crushed cymbal, which caused too much trouble before. And yeah, and here a volume automated fade out of, uh, of the coom bass. So I think that's quite cool too. Yeah, that's about it. There's just one more thing I wanted to fix earlier, which is the vibraphone part here. Let's see what... Yeah, I don't really like this movement here that it goes back to where it started. Yeah, that F sharp here, I don't really like it, so I'll try to change it. Yeah, I like this one a lot better actually. And about this one, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do here because there are more instruments going on. So maybe higher. Yeah, 
So one very final thing, I actually used the vocal sample of myself here. I just said yeah and put stuff on it like a yeah compressor so it's yeah compressed voice so it's uh, has a steadier uh, gain. I p I want to pitch it so one of the pitches is one octave down, the other one is default. Crushed it and then I put the delay after the bit crusher. So I I was actually playing with both both uh, methods like crushing the delay, but I felt like it sounded better that way, more consistent. But it's just a minor sound effect type of thing. <laughs> Probably a bit too many high frequencies here, but that's about it. Thanks for watching. Bye.